Welcome to Thriver TV, the place to break free from narcissistic abuse with quantum tools and understandings. Many, many people in this community have been abused by somatic narcissists. And even though these are the most classic and obvious narcissists, they can be so downright magnetic, charismatic and sexy that of course they can be irresistible especially before we've done the inner work to be impervious to them. So let me explain what a somatic narcissist is. Many people believe that there are two main known types of narcissists, namely cerebral and somatic narcissists. Cerebral narcissists use their minds to gain admiration, significance and acclaim, and somatic narcissists use their body to achieve the same results. Somatic narcissists are flashy and attractive. They're the people who turn heads in the street. They have an air of confidence and bravado about them. They can be funny and loud and they often have big personalities. A woman I knew years ago had a mother, now deceased, who had seven different husbands and she was stunningly attractive, loved to party and according to her daughter, was funny, loud, outrageous and hilarious. She also had numerous affairs with her six daughters, husbands and, uh, and their partners. And her motto was, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. And I'm going to do whatever I want to do. And if it offends other people, too bad. She was a classic somatic narcissist, totally concerned with appearances and used them to gain attention for the people that she preyed on. And let's face it, if a super attractive person focuses their attention on you, it can be hard to resist that. Somatic narcissists know this. And of course, like all narcissists, the high functioning ones have the personalities and the charm to captivate people. And people can even know that they're self-absorbed and fall for them anyway, being mesmerized or bewitched by their looks and personality. So for example, this woman's daughter told me that even though her mother behaved so poorly, everyone gave in to her and incredibly her husbands and daughters, even after her affairs kept forgiving her. The truth about somatic narcissists is they overcompensate in their personable behavior and the intense sculpting of their looks all to get adequate acclaim from the outside to help fill their inner emptiness within. And this brings to mind the selfie culture, people needing to constantly take body photos of oneself and post them on social media in order to get a hit of attention. There is a much greater awareness about this sort of behavior now, and many people are aware of what somatic narcissists are up to, yet they are still formidable because hardwired into many women's DNA is a chemical attraction to men with broad muscular shoulders, hard pecs, and a six pack. He's the perfect primal protector, the hunter and the gatherer that her DNA craves. Just as a woman with formidable beauty is a chemical cocktail, causing a man to lose his logic when struck by his DNA chemically recognizing her fertility and procreation potential. But apart from and including the obvious chemical ways with attractiveness that somatic narcissists operate, how are some of the ways that somatic narcissists lure their victims? And how does this differ slightly between male and female narcissists? Let's start by looking at female somatic narcissists. And please know I'm talking about the stereotypical female somatic narcissist. There of course may be exceptions to the following information. Also, there are absolutely somatic narcissists, uh, female and male who are gay and who have abused members of our thriver community. And even though I am discussing this in the context of female and male, please know that same sex relationships totally apply as well. Absolutely female somatic narcissists use their appearance as well as other formidable charms. The quest of a somatic female is to snare a sensible, solid partner who's financially stable, generous and good hearted to fall for her 
and give her exactly what she feels entitled to have to fund her lifestyle. Because her looks are a full-time profession, she needs clothes, beauty treatments and plastic surgery and to be seen with the right apparel and in the right restaurants. She also is interested in flashy homes, cars and holidays. Absolutely, she is superficial and parasitical. She believes she's entitled to the best and why should she have to work and pay for it all? I've met so many men in this community, really great guys who fell for female somatic narcissists. In fact, that is the most common type of narcissistic woman who is successful with getting partners and draining them of their life force and acquisitions, as well as moving from partner to partner when it all goes belly up. These guys thought they'd met the one, a beautiful woman who was stunning in appearance, who was interested in him. Many of these men were shocked to think they could be with a woman of such beauty who thought that he was attractive. And of course, in the early days, she granted him tons of compliments, attention and adoration. As always, anyone, beware if someone is instantly into you and moves a relationship forward too quickly. This is exactly what narcissists do in the love bombing stages, male and female. And somatic narcissistic females are experts at it. Men, if you are thinking with your little brain, the one between your legs, truly you can be putty in her hands. Somatic narcissistic women know what they're doing. They're not likely to pick a somatic narcissistic man. They don't want someone to compete with their beauty. They need someone to be completely bewitched by their own. Like all narcissists, somatic female narcissists are very good at finding people's weak links and playing on them. What are good guy's susceptibilities that she can take advantage of and use to her parasitical advantage? Acting helpless, sick or incapable are ways that she can activate his protective, caring and supportive nature. I can't tell you how many times I've heard of somatic narcissistic women in this community being sick or incapable or reliant on their good guy partners, draining their money, resources and energy more and more and hooking these men so that they feel incredible guilt regarding letting go, protecting themselves and leaving these women. Many of these women will feign suicidal tendencies or do whatever it takes to not let him go, especially when he's had enough and he wants out of the relationship. Many nice men struggle with this histronic out of control behavior that she turns on to manipulate, guilt him and control him. She may lead him to believe that she has no one else to take care of her. And of course she does. Because if you leave her, she will all of a sudden get well, become a powerhouse of attractiveness again, target someone else, start sucking him dry, and then get sick again so that she completely leeches off him and controls him. Not all somatic narcissistic women act like this, but many do. When I've done healings for men, who get trapped in this sick dynamic with somatic females, I've generally discovered that these guys suffered narcissistic fathers and had mothers that they couldn't protect. And as a result, these men may have urges to rescue that over and above normal healthy levels, which the somatic narcissist knows how to activate to her full advantage. Or if a man was not able to make his mother happy, no matter what he did, then he may be trying to please this woman over and over again, whereas, the bottomless pit that her narcissism is means nothing he ever does can durably make her happy. And that's the good guy's quest more than any other to make his lady happy because then he's happy. Another way these women hurt nice guys terribly is to have multiple affairs, even ones that he knows about while simultaneously keeping him hooked in. It's awful, this sort of behavior, but what we have to understand is this, what we allow in our life continues. 
This is no different and it doesn't stop with narcissists until we clean up our original traumas and become full and loving sources to ourselves who could no longer accept abuse any more than flap our arms and fly to the moon. Sadly, these are often lovely men who don't have their own formidable dating prowess, who believe she was the one and that I want to let go. And there's lots of healing and recovery necessary for any of us when we get stuck in the illusions of, I have to hang on because I may never meet another again who's right for me. This makes us put up with terrible abuse rather than letting go to be our own source and generate true and healthier realities. Because of a somatic narcissist charm and often formidable physical attractiveness, this can be dangerous. I've heard so many victims of somatic narcissists say, I just can't get attracted to anyone else. I don't think I'm ever going to have that level of attractiveness again to someone. I promise you that when you heal the wounds that keep you connected to a false self, these people will never be attractive to you again. You will see straight through it. Rather, real people with hearts, souls and sustenance will become your speed. And it's them that you'll share physical attractions with. But it takes the inner work to get there. So what are the telltale signs? What are some of them of a narcissistic somatic female? I think the biggest is entitlement. She has no problem spending money on her looks and her lifestyle. And if it's someone else's money, that's far better. She wants beauty treatments, label name clothes and accessories, the best vacation spot, upgraded accommodation, business class flights, expensive wine and exotic cocktails. And even though she may appear sweet and loving, her seething anger and insecurities are brewing just under the surface. One of the greatest signs of a chronic insecurity is the acting out of obscene superiority. The somatic narcissistic female can treat people terribly that she doesn't believe are treating her the way she feels entitled to be treated. Waitresses, as an example, may be common targets. How do you inoculate yourself against a female somatic narcissist? Realize that beauty is skin deep and healthy relationships take a lot more commodities than having someone on your arm who is super attractive. Lay boundaries with people who come into your life who are entitled. Don't just say yes. Take note of people who are genuinely grateful for what you do for them instead of appearing entitled and as if it's expected. Does a woman offer to reciprocate and buy you a drink back or is she trading her beauty for your wallet? Do you feel that you have to pay for someone to love and appreciate you? These are all a part of the shifting values and orientations that women and men are undergoing, moving away from gender definitions into shared power. And please know, I think chivalry is lovely, yet we are no longer living as our forebears did, where mostly men were breadwinners. Women now are as well. Yes, be generous if that's your nature, but pay attention to how any woman responds to that. Is she gracious, humble and grateful or haughtily entitled about it? Does she offer to reciprocate or is she just in it for what she can get? And again, beware of people that hook into you hard and fast. Don't be susceptible to love bombing. Take your time to get to know people before committing your life, bed and heart. If you don't, it could be a very expensive exercise, especially if you have children with this woman. Now let's check out male somatic narcissists and how they hook and hurt people. And again, note that the following is the stereotypical profile of a narcissistic somatic male, but there can be variations. And even though I'm discussing men in the context of Female partners, absolutely same-sex relationship dynamics apply. Even though women can be aesthetically lured like men, the good ones with the resources that narcissistic men like to mine are usually not taken in just by looks. There's often more that they require, such as some faith in the man's integrity and heart. 
like all high functioning narcissists, the narcissistic male knows how to find out what it is that's hurt her in the past, be sympathetic and vow and declare that he totally agrees with her and he'd never do that to her. So the unhealed woman who is yet to do the inner work on herself often succumbs to that, believes him, and she feels like she's not only found someone who is so attractive, he's also the perfect soulmate for her. He gets her. The somatic narcissistic male is not as likely to set down, settle down as the female counterpart because she's about securing someone to provide her expensive lifestyle for her, and even though she may indulge in affairs, she wants a solo partner. He's more about the sexual hookups feeding his monstrous ego. It's the thrill of the chase, the excitement of the conquest. However, he also may secure a relationship in order to have the foundations that his flashy ego wants, the house, the car, the kids, that stuff. He could also still seek a partner with security, obviously, to parasitically empty them out. Narcissists do that. And oftentimes with a partner at home, he could lie about his marital status to others and have extracurriculum sex. The kick to him is about making people fall for him. And once that's happened, he can easily discard them and keep moving on to the next conquest. Or he may keep people who are affairs on the hook while he tiggles, toggles other sources of sexual attention simultaneously. Tiggles, he's probably doing that too. And it's common for both a female and male narcissist to lose sexual interest in their committed partner because the ego needs random non-committed sexuality without emotional connection. It's much more appealing and much less threatening than true connected intimacy. So how can we avoid somatic narcissistic males? As females, when we heal our insecurities, which we're not allowing us to feel safe and that we can look after ourselves, we're not as chemically taken in by big, strong, masculine, buff men. Okay, so I admit we could still look at men like Wayne Johnson, The Rock, and say, oh, okay, but we realize that love and relationships require commodities that are not charm, the right words, flashy possessions, and being handsome. Successful love requires character and values. And as we get older, everyone has a past and therefore baggage, but has the person evolved and taken responsibility for their part in things? Or are they blaming and people and continuing the same patterns? What are their previous relationships like? And what I do believe is important is this. What is a man's relationship with his mother? And if it's been poor, has he done healing around that? For both sexes, if we're not choosing people who are decent, solid, responsible people with compassion, empathy and kindness, and we're not embracing and actualizing these values for ourselves and to ourselves, we could easily be led down the path of chemical cocktails that can lead us into very deep and hot water. So I hope that this information today and this Thriver TV episode has helped. And if you'd like to learn more about how to heal for real from toxic relationships and narcissistic abuse, you can sign up to my free 16 day recovery course, which has an invitation to a healing workshop with me. It also includes a set of eBooks and so much more. So to access these, just click the link at the top right of this video. And if you wanna see more videos, make sure you like and subscribe so you get notified as soon as each new video is released. So until next time, keep smiling, keep healing, keep thriving because there's nothing else to do. And I look forward to your questions and your comments on today's episode. Lots of love. Bye-bye.